Hello YouTube fam, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Tina and I make videos on lifestyle, home, and DIY projects every single week. Today, we are back in the basement working on another area. Well, actually, it's the same area because as you can see, we are back in the little reading nook. If you can remember from a couple weeks ago, I DIY'd some chairs as well as a marble table and I love how they came out, but I do think that it could be better and this whole basement is definitely a work in progress. The more that I work on it, the more that I think I can make it better. A lot of you suggested that I add a bookcase in here, so today we're going to do an Ikea hack and do a built-in bookcase as well as a bench. I think it's gonna elevate it so much more and actually make this area feel a little bit more complete. I'm definitely going to save the DIYs that we already did in here and use them elsewhere so they will not go to waste. And before we jump into it, I want to thank Ritual for sponsoring today's video. So I came upstairs so I can grab my bottles to show you guys, but I've been taking Ritual pretty much every single day. This one is their Essential for Women, which is a multivitamin. And this one right here is their Symbiotic Plus, which is a prebiotic, a probiotic, and also a postbiotic. This is a three-in-one supplement and the main benefit in taking it it is just to overall support your gut and immune health. I would definitely recommend it to check out the Ritual website just so that you can learn what each one of these does for you. As I've gotten older, I've definitely learned how important your gut is just to have a healthy immune system. I'm always working on projects and it definitely puts a lot on my body, so I want to make sure that I take care of it so that I can continue working. It's been really easy to keep up with this because it's just one capsule per day and you can take it at any time with or without food. Everything is made traceable so you know exactly what is going in your body and where it comes from. Plus, this is a clean formula made without GMOs. It's also vegan friendly. It's made without major allergens, animal products, or artificial colors. So I love that I know what is in this. And if you'd like to give Ritual a try, they're giving you guys 20% off of your first box with my code below. I will have everything linked so that you guys can check them out. Thank you again to Ritual for sponsoring today's video. And now we're going to jump into the video and head to Ikea. I love coming to Ikea, especially when the seasons are changing because they tend to switch things up and include more seasonal items so I love everything that they had out. I was considering doing a cabinet for this nook and I love that this has a locker feel but I did end up going with a bookshelf with drawers on the bottom which is going to be small enough to fit where I needed it to or at least I thought so because you'll see what happens later on in this video. I just realized I have to build all of this. No! Good luck! <laughs> Okay guys, we are back and I wanted to give you an overview right here in case you did miss this video. I created a little lounge situation over here with these two chairs that I DIY'd as well as the marble table. I still love how everything turned out, but I definitely think the new plan is gonna work better in here. And it's so funny because if you look at this, it actually does look like a set in the middle of my basement. Like everything else is still gray. And then we have this little corner, which Brian says looks like a podcast studio, which I cannot argue you there it totally looks like one so i grabbed a bookshelf which i'm gonna put on the left side over here and then the bench is gonna go right next to it and i think i'll put a little bit of artwork or something on the walls that is the current plan i think it's going to upgrade this area so much more and work better with the layout that i have in mind i'm gonna go ahead and clear everything out build some furniture and then get to painting <laughs> oh mood are you coming back down no, you can do this one on your own, hun. No! <laughs> Just kidding. Whoops. I think at this point we've become pros at building Ikea furniture. I can pretty much guess what we have to do without looking too closely at the instructions. But both of these pieces were really quick to put together and whenever you're hacking an Ikea item, you wanna make sure that you exclude any parts or steps that you may be DIYing. So while we were building the benches, I actually did not attach the drawer fronts so that I can DIY those later. But I'm gonna build out everything as normal and if this bench looks familiar to you, that's because it's the same chill children's toy bench storage that I use for my mudroom closet. I really love that this bench is wide, making it perfect for sitting and reading on. And also there's just so much storage inside, which we definitely need in this basement because there's literally no storage at all. 
here is where we are at so i have two of these benches but i have to cut the baseboard before this all fits in because it is a very tight squeeze in here i was initially thinking of bumping this out and putting a wall right here but i honestly just don't have the space and also that would block this light and I don't want it to, so we're just gonna keep it like this. So before I do anything else, I'm just going to take off the baseboards and then make sure that everything fits. Okay guys, we just ran into a big issue. So I put the bookshelf in and then also the bench. And I was trying to put the other bench in, but unfortunately I just do not have the room to. These walls are so slanted that I'm basically missing a whole inch from this. It's either I get rid of the bookshelf or one of the benches. So I'm trying to figure out a solution for that. Sometimes DIYs don't go as planned and that is okay. I'm just gonna have to work a little bit harder to get the vision across. I'm just gonna step away from this for a little bit figure things out and then get back to you once I have the plan. It is the next day. I actually just came back from Home Depot and I figured out what I'm going to do with this area. So instead of using the Ikea bookshelf, I'm actually just going to make my own. That way I can keep things consistent with the two benches. My other idea was to keep the bookshelf and then one of the benches and then build a little cubby bench next to it. But I thought that was going to look a little bit too busy. So instead I found these melamine shelves that already have holes in them. So it makes it really easy to create a bookshelf. I sat down and wrote all my plans, so I think I have everything that I need. I did not think that I was going to have to build my own bookshelf, but honestly, this works out so much better. I'm gonna move this out of the way, get all the shelving, and then get to cutting. All right, so this bookshelf is going to be a little over six feet, and since I have that light in the corner, I'm not building it up all the way to the ceiling, which I totally would have preferred, but I'm just working with what I've got, and this bookshelf is about 15 inches deep, so I had to use my circular saw for all the cuts. I also made sure to use some painter's tape to avoid as much chipping as possible, and this ended up working really great. I also kept my 60 tooth saw blade on there, which also helps minimize chipping, making this a breeze. To keep it in place while I'm figuring things out, I just brand nailed it, and then I'm going to screw right into these studs to make sure that this is nice and sturdy. I'm also adding in some supports at the bottom. This is also going to serve as the toe kick. And to keep it nice and sturdy, I'm adding in pocket holes to both ends. Here's the progress so far. So we have the sides up and then I put in the toe kick at the bottom and then another piece in the back just to support it all. So this is pretty sturdy since we use pocket hole screws. Next, I need to cut the top part and I also still have to screw this into the studs. As you can see, the stud is really close to these holes. So I wanna make sure that I get the shelves exactly where I want them to be before I drill into this just because it's so close. And if I ruin one of these holes, then I won't be able to put a shelf there. So I just wanna map everything out before I actually commit to it. Okay, so the vertical frame is in place, but to make sure that that right side is actually a 90 degree angle, I used a bracket and I just drilled that right into the wall. This will give it extra support and also help it from tipping over. So when it came to these shelves, I actually ended up measuring the distance for each one because they're all different. So that was a little bit tedious, but since we are using the melamine with the holes already in them, it definitely helped cut down on measuring things. So I didn't have to spend the extra time and also doing the extra math that I would have had to figure out all the holes and the heights of everything and also leveling everything off. Having those holes there really makes it so much easier. So if you're a beginner and wanna build shelves, these are definitely the way to do it. I know that these are really popular for pantries and closets and now for bookshelves. DIYing this bookcase honestly ended up being a blessing in disguise because this is actually something that I've always wanted to DIY. I don't know why I didn't just do this from the beginning. I think I was just so committed to only using IKEA products that I didn't even think to build my own. And now we're gonna have a totally custom solution that is going to fit like a glove. And this is actually going to turn out better than I had even planned. And it's definitely gonna work better for this corner than my original reading nook. But let me know by the end of the this little makeover, which version of the reading nook you guys liked better. 
So this is super sturdy, but I am going to add a little bit more support in the middle here. Now that I know everything fits, it's time to take it apart and then do my favorite thing, which is to sand. In case you didn't catch my sarcasm, I really do not like sanding. I think it is so tedious, but with melamine, you definitely can't skip this step. The surface just does not absorb anything, making paint harder to stick to. So I'm going all around with a 100 grit sandpaper, and this will give everything some grip for our primer and paint to stick to. When it comes to painting any projects that need a super smooth surface, I totally prefer using a foam roller. And this goes for the primer paint and the top coat. The one that I'm using is the BIN Primer by Zinzer. Primer is another one of those crucial steps that you need to do when working with melamine. So don't skip out on it, otherwise all of your hard work will be for nothing. Hello? You guys good in there? <laughs> Let's see if I can paint this. If you can, I would really suggest using a cabinet paint for this project, but I just ended up using what I had on hand. So this is regular wall paint, but I made sure to give everything two coats. And if you're new here, hello, my name is Tina and I'm painting the entire basement this beautiful navy blue. I'm really loving how cozy it makes the basement feel, especially now that we're getting into fall. This is just giving me all the moody vibes. It's gonna pair so perfectly with the warm tones that I wanna add in for fall decor. And I decided to use uses all over the bookshelf just to give it more of that built-in look. I really did not want it to stand out. So for this design, painting it navy was just the perfect solution. Okay guys, we are back home now and I was looking for some MDF to use. I wanted to use some scrap material because I have a ton of it, plus it's going to save me some money. And luckily I found a piece that is literally the same width as the bench. I have two of these pieces. They actually aren't long enough for the bench, but I'm going to connect two of them together. So with this one, I'm going to cut it down and then we're basically going to pocket hold them together. If you get your plywood or MDF cut at a hardware store, then you totally do not have to do all these steps. That way you can do this entire project without any power tools but again I just wanted to use up the materials that I have at home save a little bit of coin and this worked out perfectly I just joined the two pieces together with some wood glue pocket hole screws and also some staples to keep everything in place so I have my foam here this is three inches thick which is perfect for a bench and I'm basically going to measure out the exact size of the bench and then you're supposed to cut this with a serrated knife which I don't have one so I'm just going to use my jigsaw I think that will work fine but a bread knife or an electric knife will work fine for this I just don't have one on hand so jigsaw it is okay let's see if this will work hopefully oh okay Oh yeah, that's working. Now that everything is cut out, we're ready to assemble. So I'm using some spray adhesive all over the foam. This is gonna help stick it onto the MDF board and prevent it from moving around. You'll also need some batting and fabric of your choice. So I headed over to Joann's and there was so many options. I wanted something with pattern and I was also looking for a lightweight material that way we could staple it easily and also it'll be super comfortable. Ultimately, I went with this gorgeous window pane pattern in this light brown color. I think it's going to complement the bench really well. So to start, I'm folding up my batting just to give this a little bit more cushion. I got one that was only $4 per yard, so it was very inexpensive. The batting is going to help give a more professional look and feel to the cushion, so definitely necessary for this project. And for the fabric, we're just going to lay that right on top. And since I have a pattern on it, I want to make sure that it's nice and straight. Especially since this is a grid pattern, I want to make sure that I have all the corners in place. But if you're using a solid color, you definitely don't have to worry about this. Okay, how does one flip this? Ugh. Oh, I think I just pulled my arm out. I definitely pulled something. 
With my staple gun, I'm starting from the middle of one side and I'm gonna go all the way across, making sure that I hold my fabric taut as I'm doing this. And while you're working on this, you wanna keep moving to the opposite direction. This way, everything's gonna be taut on both sides, but you don't want this to be too tight because you still want there to be room for when you sit on it. And I honestly was worried that this project was not going to turn out, but to my surprise, this project was actually easier to do than I thought, especially since we're using a staple gun. This goes by so much quicker I really was not confident in sewing anything, so this was definitely the way to go. And you'll see that I'm stapling it until I'm a couple inches away from the corners, and then we're gonna go ahead and just finish those off. Time for the trickiest part, which are the corners. And the first thing you want to do is to get rid of this excess fabric. Otherwise, it's gonna be really bumpy over here, so I'm going to cut that off. Fold it over this way. Then we basically want to get rid of this and then work with these two flaps. So I'm just going to cut that right off. Now, I basically want to put this part underneath and then tuck this over top so that the long way is going inside and then the shorter sides will tuck on top of that. Okay, now that this end is basically tucked in, we're gonna take this end and then basically just roll it. And now it is nice and clean and then you can just add a staple right there. Sit on it. I'm so happy with this. I think it looks really professional and it's super comfy as well. If you've ever wanted to make a bench cushion, you should totally go for it because honestly, this was not that hard to do and I think it looks amazing. And also there was no sewing involved, which is an extra bonus. Moving on to the last project. So I want to DIY the drawer fronts. These are just plain white and basic. So I grabbed some wallpaper and this has a nice texture to it. I love that it's a natural color. And then I also grabbed some trim and we're going to do a shaker style trim detail on all around. This is such a quick way to upgrade these and make them look so much more expensive and it's also going to pair really nicely with the whole mood that I want to have in the book nook. This wallpaper was actually pretty inexpensive, but it's going to give us more of that high-end look. It was so easy to apply and also to remove if you ever want to change things up in the future. But as you can see, I'm lining up the corners and working my way over. I'm just going to go as slowly as I possibly can, just peeling off the backing bit by bit. And I ended up just smoothing everything out with my hands, starting from the center and just making sure to get rid of any air bubbles. Once that was on, I cut my trim pieces on my miter saw to size and I'm doing a shaker style so the horizontal pieces are going to be longer than the vertical ones. And these are just simple straight cuts that you can totally do with a handsaw and to attach them, I'm just using my brad nailer in each corner. I also want to note that I'm not using adhesive or anything to stick these on. They're really lightweight and that way I can remove it pretty easily if I ever want to in the future. And now that everything is on, that is all there is to this project. I'm assembling the fronts back onto the drawers and then we're going to personalize them even more by adding in some brass knobs. I think these really tie everything together and I love the look of doing two on a drawer. I think it just looks so classic along with this modern style. And by just doing a couple of these steps, it totally elevates the drawers like these look so much more expensive and I just love how they came out. It is finally time to fill up the bookshelf and also to style. I actually don't have enough books to fill up the whole entire bookshelf. We actually got rid of a bunch of books when we moved, but I did ask you guys for some book recommendations and you guys came through. So I went out and I got all of these books and I'm so excited to read them. I'm definitely going through a reading phase right now, so I'm excited to dive into all of these. I even got this little book club journal, which I think is so cute and I kind of just write my thoughts on all the books I've been reading. So this whole book nook is going to get so much use. If you can't already tell, I'm just so excited about this. So let's cozy it up and reveal it to you guys. To start, I'm adding in this USB powered gallery light. Not only does it look gorgeous, but it also doubles as an extra reading light that can easily be taken down to charge when needed. 
And of course, I have to have some greenery in every space of my house. So I'm adding in a mix of real and faux plants because this basement barely gets any light. So fake plants will have to do. And as for the bench, I'm adding in a couple of pillows here and I still need to find the perfect throw blanket for the spot. And now onto the bookshelf. I'm hoping to completely fill this one day. So leave me some of your favorite book suggestions below. Okay, let's take a look back at what this corner looked like before we did anything to it. There really was not much going on, but after adding some paint, a bookshelf, and a custom bench, we were able to turn it into a cozy corner. So without further ado, welcome to my new and improved reading nook. our finished reading nook. I am just beyond happy with how this turned out. It seriously just makes me so happy looking at the bookshelf and the bench with the pillows and everything. I just think it came out so good. It is going to be so much fun coming down here and reading my books once the whole basement is finished. Let me know which reading nook you guys liked better, if it was version one or version two. I think the answer is kind of obvious though. We are one step closer to finishing the basement and I can't wait for what's next. And thank you again to Ritual for sponsoring this video. If you want to get 20% off of your first month with them, make sure to click on my link in the description box. Don't forget to follow me over on Instagram for daily updates and sneak peeks. That is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Stay inspired and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!